The picks and bans for CJ versus SK Telecom. And there's that rumble ban against Marin. Not a big shock there. Yeah, ban against him nearly every game. I'm a bit yep. surprised because CJ has had the gumption to first pick rumble at times. And LeBlanc banned against Coco. You saw that he has an over 52% ban rate of that champion against him. And that's not really been something that Easy Hoon has ever been known for. What's interesting about the Faker Easy Hoon switch is how much the pick and ban phase has to change depending on which mid laner is in the game. Obviously, uh, SKT would not be the ones banning LeBlanc if the Faker was in right now. Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. Vagar, so they're not going to first pick it. Madlife has been practicing a lot of Vagar in solo queue recently. I was kind of wondering where that was going to go, if we were going to see that get through, but it looks like CJ does just go ahead and ban that right away. What will be some of the other bans? You know, a lot of teams lately have just been banning the Nunu against SK Telecom as well, just not wanting to deal with it. Let's see if CJ does. I don't ban. blame uh, SKT for banning the Mundo at all. We've seen that multiple times this season. Shy is just so good yeah. on that champion. He can zone out your entire back line with relative ease. Seems like uh, Mundo and Lulu have been the two very scary champions for Shy to pick up this season. Yeah, I, we'll see if Cassidy goes through right here because CJ does emphasize that pick. And so what are they going to ban? Looks like they will ban Nunu okay. at the end. Yeah, a lot that of teams, sense. like I said, just not wanting to even deal with it. Benki grinning as the Nunu ban comes in. Well, they've got a plan, and this does leave Jarvan open, and it puts some, a little bit of pressure on the CJ maybe to go for that Jarvan first pick. Rek'Sai, the final ban, so that really makes CJ choose now. Do they take that Jarvan, or do they grab something else? I got Lissandra, yeah. Cassidy, Lulu all available. Lulu wouldn't be bad. I feel like for CJ, Lulu would be a decent choice. Corky, of course, always a strong pickup for really any AD well, carry. Bang has an overwhelmingly high win rate on yeah. Corky this season. And it has been just a priority pick overall. So do you take that away? I think mm. CJ's, I think that's more likely. This is a more contested pick, I think. And Space has been doing very well on Sivir as well in general, but it will be the Corky actually. So okay. Lissandra, Jarvan, Lulu, all still available here. Benki insta-locks to Jarvan and a thrash Fresh. taken in the first rotation by SK Telecom. All right. A lot of engage in the yeah. first two picks from SKT already, so. Well, I think it's smart to keep a Thresh away from Mad Life. I'd love to see a Master Yi, but I don't think we're going to see that. Not since uh, Corn Salad like three <laughs> years ago or something like that. Two years ago have we seen a Master Yi played at OGN. And will Hecarim. be locked in very early on. So I guess Shy wasn't kidding. Shy was not <laughs> lying to you, no. Doa. Very high up on the priority list. So Cassidy, however, that would show their hand a bit early, I think. Although Easy about. Hoon doesn't really play a lot of AD mids. He does play Jace, uh, but it's certainly not up to snuff compared to some of his other champions. I'm wondering if SKT is actually going to pick this Katarina, and they're going to try and see if they can get it in as a, at a last pick. Yeah, I wonder too. Well, Cassiopeia might be the choice as well. And Bang's going to go ahead and lock in that Callista, but a quick switch over to Maokai, and Marin will take a top laner that he has been extremely successful with lately. Okay, so bang on Callista this time around, mixing yeah, it up. Pretty cool. See if he can turn that matchup on his head. On its head, the matchup that he had such trouble with in their last series versus Najin. I really like seeing these Callista games. She's been a really fun champion to watch. Although I have to admit, I have not yet played a game with her. Got to do that sometime. Oh, could be Cassidy and Rengar here. They wouldn't have a lot of. Huh. Speed bonus. I would think Lulu would be the better champion in this situation if you want to all in engage. Except especially Lulu to the mid lane, you uh, mean? Uh, yeah, Lulu mid lane would yeah. be excellent with Hecarim and Rengar just for the wild growth and the additional speed boost oh, absolutely. that you can get right there. I think that's a better pickup than this Cassidy. Coco, pretty well known for his Cassidy play, but compositionally, yeah, I think it's a, a no brainer that. The ult from Lulu is going to do a bit more and then speeding up Rengar and Hecarim even more would help. But it is going to be the Cassidy for Coco. So what will the final pick be? Will Easy Hoon? Cassiopeia. Yep. Cassiopeia in the mid lane. All right. So not bringing out that Katarina just yet. But I wonder. I wonder if we're going to see that again. The bane of low ELO in champions perhaps today. We'll see if the Katarina makes it through in another game. 
Katarina's one of those champions that you just have to ban in your solo games because either she's on your team and she's terrible or she's on the other team and she's like amazing. <laughs> That's how it always is. Too true. But just ban it. It is uh, always a risky pick a competitive play. Oh, Sometimes yeah. it can work out, but with a Hecarim coming in there to disrupt you, maybe not the best choice <laughs> in this yeah. particular game. Now, going into this one, they have a lot of peel for Bang and a lot of other threats, so we'll see how well he can get rolling on this Kalista. It's been a little bit hit or miss here in Korea, depending on the player who has been at the helm. Well, Easy hoon has got an ult now that just kind of stops the engaged cold if CJ tries to jump into the back lines, which... I think well, it's going to be It's going to be hard, helpful. though, because Kassadin and Hecarim are probably going to be coming in from flanks, so it may Ideally. actually be easy, e or difficult for Easy Hood to get off a proper ultimate in this particular team fight. If Shy and Coco and Ambition play this properly, I don't think it's going to be quite so easy yeah, for the Hoon. Positioning will need to be pretty good for SK Telecom. I, I really wonder about Banks and Kalissa. We'll talk more about it once we get in the game. It's time, guys. And here we go. Welcome to Summoner's Rift. CJ Antis versus SK Telecom. <laughs> and like we mentioned before the intro, Bangs Callista. Now, for a player that's been getting himself killed repeatedly by being too aggressive, jumping in too far in fights, is Callista really the best pick? And so I think this is really going to kind of put his recent weaknesses to the test. Yeah, he does have a lot of appeal for him, though, so I think he will have a considerable amount of we uh, leeway here. Yeah. Well. The peel only goes as far as you, you know, allow it to, really. If you're going to jump past them, they can't help you very much. It's true. The spang we're talking about here. Sending out the Sentinels early on to keep an eye on things. Those weird floating head dudes. Yeah, so looks like Marin will be stacking up some saplings here at the raptor buff for that early advantage, taking out the small raptors. And it would appear we are going to see the dual lane switch it up here. So Space and Mad Life do not want the matchup versus Callista. And Thresh makes a lot of sense. Of course, very dangerous matchup, considering that Callista can really punish Corky's low damage output early on. Yeah. With a lot of auto attacks. Going in, and looks like the Raptors are going to get taken by Marin right off the bat. Give him a little bit of an XP boost as he goes into lane, which will be nice. Fans of Coco on the right there. All right, well, Marin's going to have to be zoned off immediately, though, and yeah. this is not the greatest situation coming in here for SKT. Uh, they we'll see if they actually got the lane freeze in the bottom side. I don't believe they did. Wolf on the roam right now, but Marin not being actually punished up in the top lane. He is going to be able to get some of this experience at the very least. Yeah, looks like he's almost level two already. Gets sapling in there. Shouldn't be too much of a problem. Oh, and Coco. wow, early action onto uh, Coco here. Forced to burn that flash early. I don't really know what Coco was expecting right there. You, yeah. he's playing down onto the weak side of the map right there, and he knows that Wolf could be roaming. That is a pretty big mistake. He kind of just let Wolf walk right up in flame. That's that yeah. very odd. I mean, he may have been looking at something else. That's a very strange moment, but yeah. certainly should be a little bit more cognizant about what's going on on the map, and shouldn't be playing really to that side of the lane. Yeah. Is that Wound? <laughs> Looked like Wound. Kind of did. I haven't seen him in like a year or two. But... And Marin taking some damage. They get the flash out of him as well. So a couple flashes on each side burned early on. But will CJ maybe be able to take advantage of Marin with no flash pre-6? Well, here comes the top lane. The thing is, is SKT didn't get the freeze down early on right here. So there may be an opportunity for a little bit of a teleport, a large minion wave developing right there. Looks like Shine not going to actually TP, will be walking up with Mad Life and Ambition instead, but good yeah. timing. They should catch most of that wave. 
So Easy Hoon, I believe, just has one game on that. Uh, Cassiopeia Correct, this yes. series, and he did win that, of course, pretty resoundingly, too. Yeah, really right. showed some great aggression, particularly with the ultimate. So Shy, yeah. going to be collecting a lot of that XP that he may have otherwise missed out on. Barrett now got the early XP, but now he's got to deal with this lane freeze and see if anybody's going to be able to help him with this or if he's going to overextend and maybe allow Ambition some time to make a play. Yeah. Bengi all the way back in base right now, and they know the support's bottom side, so certainly Ambition does have a bit of a window. A bit of a quiet game early on. But very nice little lead for Shy in terms of top laners. I'm just really, I mean, there's just so many questions about this one. Is Easy Hoon going to play as crazy aggressive as he did in his last game with Cassie B? He was like flash ulting people in that game, which is not something you see Easy Hoon do very often. No, but really it was appropriate. He knew his limits nicely. He, he actually well. did set up a lot of those kills. And he doesn't have to be particularly careful in this game either. If he gets a good flash ult in, he should absolutely take it and just let Bang clean up the team fight. And they have enough AoE going on. We'll see what Bang decides to build right here. If he is going to go for the Hurricane or uh, Vamp Scepter or Infinity Edge, a lot of different possible builds. Yep. Ambition. Uh, knock up onto Ambition, but Mad Life there with the counter knock up to try to keep Becky safe. Ambition getting very low though. Force the Flash, exhaust onto Easy Hoon. And Ambition doesn't quite burn down from that Ignite or the poison from Cassiopeia. So much damage. Yeah. Uh, once you get rolling with that poison and the Twin Fangs. So have to be quite careful. Ambition gets caught out, and now SKT Ooh. will find themselves an opportunity to take this dragon. They do have control over the bottom side of the map right now. Everybody recalling at the same time. So yeah, easy enough. No one really able to stop that dragon. And Banks are getting to do some farming down in mid lane. It looks like Shy is going to come up here, throws a warden, so they will be aware that it's happening. But I don't think CJ is going to get there in time to do anything about this. Yeah, Bang coming up now. And first dragon, really early at six minutes, goes to SK Telecom. Well, that was, you know, they just lost control after a little bit of a failed gank attempt right there. But it's a good read by Bengi standing in the brush, knowing which side that. CJ would be looking to make a play on. Yeah. And Shy continuing to get pretty far ahead right here at the bottom side. So levels are even. And now finally, Marin may be able to pick up some CS as the wave has at long last reversed all the way back to SK Telecom's tower. Yeah. You know, I feel like he's not quite as far behind as he could be. Well, only about 8 CS down at the moment. So. Could well, be worse. I'm really surprised CJ didn't try a little bit harder to punish him up in the top side or at least push him out. Yeah, they managed to take away his flash, but that was about it. Well, I was wondering, you know, when they got that flash early, if that was going to cause some sort of gank to happen, but they never really went for it. I'm quite surprised. But yeah. that said, SKT does have a lot of good wards up in the river. They did get those down early just to make sure they could keep eyes on Ambition, make sure and he wasn't going to be leaving either of those jungle entrances in the river to come up into the top side for a gank. Yep. Coco looking for, oh, did he see Bengi? Bengi very Ooh, low. I don't know. He puts a ward down either way. Bengi was able to get away. Marn extremely low here up in the top lane. He is level six though, so it's going to be a bit harder for him to be ganked, even though his flash is down for a couple more seconds. But just seems like CJ doesn't want to go for it. Nope, not yet, and Marin did go for a double Doran's ring, so he will be a little bit behind in terms of his build. Has nearly caught up in terms of his farm, however, so be positive for him. Coco having a yeah. tough time staying even with Easy Hoon here. Well, that's, I suppose that's not the most surprising thing ever if you uh, look at a Cassidy and, uh, oh, here we go, action up in the top lane. Marin pops that ultimate Mad Life in space, going for it, and space takes first blood. I guess they just don't need anyone to come gank for him. Mad Life and Space have it covered themselves. Yeah, uh, Marin without the teleport there, he got a little bit greedy, didn't want to go back. Yep. Because he had already used that TP. Shy not even trying to TP up into the top lane for that gank. He'll just be able to continue farming, so. Yeah. CJ in a comfortable position right now. Benki going after the second red buff. You know, and uh, they did that too right before Marin's flash came up as well, so. Really nice timing there, yeah. getting him when he was at his most vulnerable. Yeah, so they ended up making something out of it in the end. Yeah. 
Very, very nicely done by CJ. Good timing. Silly us, man. We thought that uh, Madlife needed a jungler to come and make plays for him. <laughs> yeah, seriously. We, we didn't know who we were talking about. That's what you get when you disbelieve God. <laughs> Forgive us, Madlife. <laughs> Even if you're not playing Blitzcrank. Maybe someday. Maybe we'll see it again someday. Easy Hoon, yeah, massively ahead in CS over Coco at the moment. 33. Yeah, this is going to be wow. really worrying because Cassiopeia is such a high damage mid laner yeah. in terms of team fighting. And so she gets rolling early with this tier. And the fact that she has gone for the tier and is still managing to deal as much damage to Coco as she has is quite impressive. Coco going to be scaling as well. So Easy Hoon definitely going to be having an advantage in terms of mid lane power for the foreseeable future. Be up to Space, who got that first blood, and he hits that Trinity Force power spike to kind of drag Coco through this one and yeah. hope he can make it into the late game. Obviously, CJ does have a lot of tools to deal with the Cassiopeia, though. Of course, they can get onto her with three different champions out of top, mid, and jungle. So Easy Hoon is going to have a hard time staying wow. alive considering his lack of mobility. Slim Fangs, man, that is a lot of damage. Very annoying to deal with. Yeah. Generally speaking, you have to be very confident in your ability to dodge those that poison so you don't get it constantly reset on your face. Yep. 2v2 now in the spot lane. Space with a kill, though. He's already got that sheen done. The phage is nearly done as well, but Bang with his his uh, BF sword should be able to keep up. But here comes Ambition. And the uh, scrying Sneaky. lens was just used on that brush and river, so they're not going to suspect that Ambition is there. Well, they've got a lot of deep wards in it. Speaking of deep wards, SK Telecom again. Look how many wards they get into the enemy side of the jungle. And that was right before the lane swap coming in from CJ as well. So they timed it nearly perfectly. SK Telecom getting the wards in while they still had a strong side advantage with their AD carry and support on the bottom side of the map. And then when the swap came over and Ambition could walk into oh. that side of the jungle again, here we go. And Ambition with the ultimate. I don't know what he was expecting really with that one. Easy Hoon was already pretty far and back. And they knew he was there. Again, yeah. the wards seeing him exactly. And just a great timing. bengi has been so on point in terms of dealing with these wards. And that's a great read on the lane swap. You have to anticipate when they're going to move back. And if you're SKT, well, you know what they're doing is trying to dodge your duo lane pre-6 until Corky gets those rockets and can harass you at a very safe range and start getting that sheen for the additional damage as well. And, you know, they managed to execute it beautifully. So that means that SKT, knowing the timing, was going to be able to track that Rengar and it really worked out for them. So yeah, it's kind of a return to form for SKT from what we saw in the first half of the first round of the tournament. They really have tightened up their play in their last two matches specifically. Yeah, Bengi going for the early sidestone again, ambition building into damage, but he hasn't been able to make a play work yet. It's been a passive lane swap game, and yeah. it's mostly just been a lot about about a lot of these uh, mind games. Yeah, seeing who can get more information. Yeah, Marin down a little bit in CS, and he does have that one death in Shy, but that really shouldn't impact a whole lot long term. I'm just wondering what's going to happen with the second dragon that just came up now. You know, are we going to see CJ make a play for this one? Teleports up for both top laners. Looks like SKT wants to maybe see if they can get a pick first, and that'll lead to a dragon. Yeah, they, oh, they don't. Might, you know. They don't have vision up on the high ground though. Now the ward's been placed. Yeah. They were just waiting to see if they could time it while Co if they thought Coco was walking over. Right. And then chain some CC over the wall, but it's not going to happen. Instead, they're going to go after the crab. Callista just gives you so much vision over the river in your own jungle and in situations like this. Looks like they might lose their bot turret, though, to Captain Tor, to a space, rather. I said Captain Jack. I'm just going to, like, <laughs> attribute every dead turret to Captain Jack at this point. <laughs> Good job, Captain Jack. Well, he used to be a CJ player. Uh, that is true, yeah. <laughs> Not too far off. Although, he didn't play with Mad Life. Knock up onto Ambition here. Wolf coming down. If you get him with the death sentence, uh, there's a flash from Ambition. And this could lead. Yeah, immediately Bang starts the dragon. And I think SKT has a pretty good chance at this one. And this would be two dragons already for SK Telecom if they can pull this off. Really nicely done. Again, Wolf yeah. and Bengi working together. Look at the wards coming in onto that dragon side. They're able to catch Ambition out and chunk him out. 
Yep. One more time, Ambition's Rengar really hasn't been particularly useful, and they're gonna get another turret off of this as well. Easy Hoon just going to hop onto the lantern and find himself safely back up the lane. So SKT playing this out really nicely so far. Yeah. Even though they are at that gold deficit, they've managed to get those two dragons. And Easy Hoon is really rolling right now. Bang will be going for the Bloodthirster first, it would appear. Not yeah. my favorite build unless you're super far ahead. And he's certainly not. No. Yeah, he's no, he's not. Down in CS, no kills. Yep. And I wouldn't call that ahead. And uh, CJ takes a bit of a turret lead as well, too. So it will be a lot on uh, Easy Hoon to be able to continue to sort of snowball his lane and they're gonna go after Shy. Looks like Shy ults out, gets slowed by the box after his ultimate finishes. And Wolf and Bang just doing a lot of damage. Nice death sentence at the very end. And Shy with no flash. That teleport Ignite and Hecarim does have a bit of vulnerability if you catch him in lane like that. Right, great wrap around the backside, getting the ultimate yeah. out and saving a lot of that crowd control, the flay and the death sentence in order to hunt him down at the end. Yep. Doing a much better job of hunting people down than Ambition is on Rengar in this game, unfortunately for uh, for him. <laughs> yeah, this Rengar pick, we've seen it work really well for Ambition before, but that's when he's had a lot of tools to speed him up. Oh, um, and Bengi. The last time CJ ran this Rengar, it was with Orianna in the mid lane and Lulu in the top side. I feel like running Rengar without any sort of, you know, really good speed boost does kind of nerf it a little bit. I agree. I don't think it's a strong pick unless it's in very specific compositions right now yeah. at the professional level. I mean, if you think about the options that were open to Ambition, though, it was, as far as what we've seen him play, it was really just Lee Sin or maybe Kha'Zix or something like that. He well, didn't really have the I disagree. The I think I think Ambition could play newly right here because he oh, okay. used to be All a right. very good middly mid player. I don't see any problem with that. That's something that he does have a lot of practice with. That's a good point. And could feel very comfortable on. Good point. Shy, going back into lane now. Hmm. And Marin, the first one to upgrade his trinket on the SKT side. That's a pretty early upgrade, but yeah. really going to be quite necessary. That gets you so many more wards over the course of the game. Ambition gets caught out. Yes, he does. And there's a Cataclysm. No flash this time. And Wolf hits him with the death sentence. That is going to be, yes, it will be a dead Ambition. A kill going to Easy Hoon, further propelling him ahead. Shy just going to push up that bot lane now, I guess. Yeah, doing what he can to keep on farming, but. Yeah, they do have teleport advantage for the moment. Marn used his. Ambition has just done nothing this game. I mean. Part of that has been the great warding from SK Telecom, but just some very strange decisions. Uh, I, I was very quick to praise the SKT warding in the bottom side right before the swap back into the 2v2 lane occurred, but part of that is knowing that when the enemy has control over that side of the jungle in a lane swap, that there's a likelihood for wards to be down there and ulting out of the bottom side jungle. When teams know how to ward around Rengar, they ward deeper than normal just so they can catch him at the start of his ult or at least anticipate where he's going because otherwise he just walks invisibly right over those green wards. And uh, Ambition decide to gamble a little bit right there. And he paid for it with the failure of that first gank and otherwise has found himself caught out, resulting in a dragon being given up now as well as his own death once. So he really needs to make something work right here. but. With the ward coverage that SK Telecom has and the way they continually play the bottom side of the map only, SKT not getting too cocky on other parts of the map, as you'll notice. They just want to control one side and only make plays onto that side, and it's working out really nicely. Yeah. Easy Hoon is nearly 60 CS up on Coco right now, too, so he's really doing a great job of continuing to extend that lead, and now that he's got a kill, too. And he is getting a bit terrifying. Quick Abyssal Scepter for him as well, it looks like. Dragon up in 120. Ambition trying to chase on Bengi, but he's not going to catch him, and that ult is down now. Yeah, Ambition not finding a lot of luck with this Rengar this game. Look how conservative SKT playing, is playing in the top lane. They just had Kalista there push out just a tad bit before heading back down. They're taking very few risks. Marin pushing out again right into Shai's Hecarim, but without further Vision up inside the tri brush or any in the river right now. 
They are quite afraid of what could be coming in. Marin going for a trade, but immediately backing off after that. He does have Bengi there to back him up if necessary. Yep. I think SKT just really wants that third dragon. I mean, if they can get three dragons this quickly while CJ has zero, the pressure is starting to get pretty intense in that situation. Right, but they, they're they not giving up too much for it. Yeah, they just got a bunch of wards cleared out. CJ did manage to finally get some vision inside of Marin, or uh, SKT's bottom side jungle. Mm -hmm. uh, still waiting, and Easy Hoon right there goes back for the Archangels. Yeah, already has two items built. As opposed to just Serrat of Ages and the Seeker's Arm Guard for Coco right now. So you just got to do something about this. They can't keep letting these dragons go for free, but it's quite scary to fight against Easy Hoon at the moment. Yeah. Teleport still not up for Marin, so CJ could make a very aggressive play right here if they so chose. Well, it'll be up for Marin to stop shy from teleporting. And they're going to grab Madlife, bring people in on the Lantern. Madlife pushes people away with the ultimate, but he's going to get caught into the Cataclysm he goes. And Ambition trying to take down Bengi now. Space firing a couple of his own rockets and Coco coming into the fight. Bang, coming down, he loads up the ultimate. They miss with it, though. It looks like Space went over the wall with uh, his flash. This is all again, setting up another dragon for SK Telecom. Oh, Shy came down with his teleport. SKT, though, like we saw earlier, playing conservatively. They want the objective. They don't need the fight right now. Now, it was a good flank right there from Shy. He did force the flash out of Easy Hood, but yeah. they're all coming in from one direction right now. This sets them up for a really easy Cassiopeia ultimate, and CJ will have to back off. They lost the angle, but Wolf right there waiting with the lantern to deny the flank after the flash from Easy Hoon. So Easy Hoon makes a bit of a positional error, but does manage to recover. Well, he also managed to save his ultimate through all that as well, yep. too. So yeah, that meant that that positional mistake for CJ was something that uh, SKT could still capitalize on. End of the day. They're yep. a dragon for SKT now. This wow. is really getting out of hand. When they got that six-minute dragon and have been taking them so consistently afterwards, it's really putting this Whoa, game on a Marin short caught up Marin. a little bit. And wow, he goes back in with the Twisted Advance. Can his team get anything out of this? Coco getting low. Death Sentence does connect with Ambition, but no real follow-up. I think Marin thought a few of his teammates were, were a bit closer to that one. Well, also part of the issue was Easy Hoon uh, actually just whiffed his Cassiopeia ult right there, so didn't get any of the damage down. Saved it a bit overly long, so wasn't able to make the conclusive play. But you know, that's not going to be the end of the world. SKT still with a pretty large lead at the moment. I'd say so. And they've got that late game scaling advantage as well. So yeah, it looks like they're they be should able be to just fine. Red. Yep. Red buff for Bang. And he should have enough money to uh, pick something up at this point, or it should be getting close anyway. Yeah, look at that pressure from SKT as well. That allows Bengi to take his red in return. Nobody really there to fight that at all. Yeah. After we did see CJ overstay their welcome in the top side, uh, they may not have. Uh, double catalyst for Marin right now. Ooh, that's a mistake. Huh. Yeah, I don't think you. I don't think you really need that. He's following the the wisdom of Gank by Mom, doubling up items. That's double right. Void Staff, double Zonius for Gank by Mom so far this season. Mistakes <laughs> both times. Marin's getting in on it. He just really. You know, wants to build the double catalyst item that you know Riot's been designing for so long, and they just haven't put it in the game yet. I'm sure it's coming eventually. Marin's just he's, looking into the future, man. He's going for I don't know, righteous glory and rod of ages. Yes. Marin doesn't even realize what's going on yet. Like, I don't think look he at my pretty rocks. Hey, don't be distracted by the rocks that he's got. He's still far. He's still Marin from the block, man. <laughs> he's still Marin from the block. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. He used to have a little. Now he's got a lot of catalysts. <laughs> yeah. OK. Well, Shy going to be alone underneath the turret. Wolfen, thank you thinking better about that die. Space split pushing very nicely right now. Marin did go back. Still double catalyst. Uh, well, what can you do at this point? <laughs> CJ takes that tier two. SK Telecom still pushing that top lane, though. They've got that nice pink ward at the blue buff of CJ. It's going to keep Bang and Wolf a bit on the safe side. Two rings, two rocks. Makes right. sense. Yeah. So he buys all of his items in twos these days. 
Well, he can't get the double shroud. He's going to have to sell his Merc Threads for that, I guess. Well, he needs two boots. I mean, he's got two feet, right? <laughs> double Merc Tread, double Home Guard Enchant. Yep. Let's do it. moving so fast. Good thing Hecarim's not getting that. He would need four. Four boots. It'd be pretty awkward. He should just get horseshoes. Where's... <laughs> a lucky horseshoe. L a lucky horseshoes. Where are those? Yeah. He can't wear conventional boots. Come on, Rito. It's really unfair to Hecarim players. Question is, what does Cassiopeia use? Oh yeah. Do they like, have some sort of special snake grease? Like a, a body sock, maybe, <laughs> or something like that. I don't know. It's a sleeping bag. Just like slips into it. Body grease. <laughs> snake grease. Snake grease. <laughs> Slither extra quickly. It sounds like something one of our ancestors sold in the old west or something. I don't know. Not snake oil, though. Uh, snake grease. Snake grease makes your snakes go faster for your snake races. That's right. Of course. If you have a, you know, if you're running an illegal snake racing ring. See, I just have, have a, a snake grease. I just use an anaconda because then it just stretches out and it's already at the finish line. <laughs> Boom! Easy. <laughs> I've got the snake race thing beat. <laughs> easy snake, easy life. <laughs> Well, this has not been a very exciting game, has it, though? No, it's been pretty boring. We're talking about snake grease, man. <laughs> oh, all right, Mad Life. No flash. Well, now he has a flash. Or now he doesn't have a flash, rather. I think he just uh, used it. Where did, where did he flash to exactly? I didn't see him move, but it went on cooldown. It just seems like he kind of flashed in place a little bit there. He had the backup at the very least, so did yes. get chunked out, but with 50 seconds still to go. A lot more work that can't be done. Bengi going to dodge a bunch of skill shots right there. And I then guess so. Take the lantern out. Dragon in 40. SKT set up to take their fourth, and it doesn't look like there's really anything CJ has been able to do about it this game. Mad they have to do something. Well, they have to now, yeah. Oh, Baron uh, sold one of his catalysts for another rock, Frozen Heart. Uh, okay. Well, there's not enough, like, tree-oriented items in League of Legends, you know? Yeah, no clubs. Yep, that's right. Well, there's a Brutalizer. That's true. Yeah, you don't see a lot of Brutalizers on uh, Maokai, though. <laughs> All right. Attack speed uh, AD Maokai. The dream. Sounds like a Chober build, doesn't it? <laughs> well. well. Here we go. Fourth Dragon, and CJ is in position. They started SK Telecom. Well, they don't have control over the Scuttler, though. They do have yeah. some nice vision. SKT. SKT not really sweeping that out at all either. Well, SKT, we'll see if they can test it. They're getting in, yeah. They'll just go ahead and start the dragon themselves. Marin zoning a bit. Benki as well, and it does go over to SKT. Here comes Yelp from Shy. Doesn't really catch many people with it, though. Ambition jumps in, gets blown up immediately. There's a heal. Doesn't keep Ambition alive for too long. A play from Wolf brings in for the double kill for Easy Hoon. Marin low backs away. A triple kill for Easy Hoon. Are we done yet? Space. Tries to get away, pops that summoner heal just to try to make it out after the flash. Gets caught anyway. There's a quadra for Easy Hoon, and it looks like Coco's too far away. <laughs> He's going to deny the Penta. Scumbag casted and always escaping. He might be able to catch him yet. No, there's a ward. No. Well. No, no, he's, he's got way too it. much mana for Riftwalk. And oh, he has well. Riftwalk up. And he has Flash, so and Riftwalk still works, so. <laughs> Riftwalk isn't nerfed into oblivion yet. Yeah. So that'll be it. But uh, CJ well. deciding that that was the fight they wanted to take, apparently. Not sure I agree with that. You see Marin right here. Look at the, um, the engage from Shy and Ambition. Marin immediately popping on top of space though, making it very difficult for him to do anything. And all that peel from SK Telecom giving Easy Hoon really free reign, even through the exhaust, yeah. to get a lot of damage down. Very nicely played team fight by SK Telecom. And bang, all he needs is one auto here. He's gonna, I believe he popped the summoner heal to catch up and get the slow. He did indeed. Yep. Bang enabling that. Good and job, Easy bang. Hoon just Having a great game. Yeah, Death Cap now and another Blasting Wand on top of it. Just kind of cruising along. He's a he's a well-greased snake this time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Just sl sliding through the rift, I guess. Just sliding through the rift. And he's yeah, doing enough. Oh, ambition coming in with the ultimate. I don't know if they're going to catch anyone. They get the double slow from Cassidy. He's going to go in on the easy hood. He's going to bit low. Shy comes from the side, and they will manage to catch easy hood. 
efficient, still coming in. So there we go. Finally caught that easy. Shy a bit low here. Benki's going to lock him up for the moment with the L. That was a bit overly bold. Marin coming in from the side. They're going to try to flank this and fight it. 4v5, I guess. Knock up onto Marin. Shy comes in again. He's going to get CC'd. Goes into the box. Shy a bit low. Now Coco dodges the death sentence from Wolf, though. Oh, but Ambition gets hit with a QE combo from Jarvin. He's going to be in big trouble space, firing a couple rockets from the outside. But it looks like CJ is going to lose their jungler yet again. A double kill now for Marin. And Bang is able to hop his way out. A hop, skip, and a jump, and a lantern. And he's safe. And I really like the engage there from SK Telecom, the re-engage. Yeah. Bengi tied them up long enough to get them to deal a little bit of extra damage, almost like a little bit of a mind game right there because they stuck around that allowed Marin time to get into the back line. But the thing about CJ is without the Hecarim and Rengar ultimates up, there's really nothing they can do about Bang just autoing them forever from the back. Everyone else has so much peel available that Marin easily able to zone people out while the autos rain in from Bang, yeah. that makes it not so difficult for them to pick up a further couple of kills right oh, there at Bang. A little bit of range. Not quite hitting Coco. Was a blind shot, so. It's pretty accurate for a blind shot, too. Lee Sin would be proud. Yeah, this game, though, it's been kind of a story of SK Telecom controlling the Dragon and CJ just not doing a lot in general. Right. And I feel like CJ did have some prime advantages that were handed to them early in this game, particularly because of the lack of a freeze from SKT early on during the lane swap. And they also could have tried to make some plays up onto Marin in the top side as a result of him overextending thanks to the freeze from CJ. But it seems yeah. like a bit of botched jungle pressure early. And since Rengar never really got anyone rolling, and Easy was just pretty much free farming, and he was free farming in a very heavily winning matchup. Coco getting bullied out of lane, and now you see the results of that. Easy Hoon is enormous. Yeah, you gotta wonder uh, how things would be different if Coco had gone with that Lulu after all, huh? Yeah, I think I think the Lulu would have been a very interesting pickup, at least in terms of the synergy with this composition. Would it have yeah. done enough damage combined with the Corky in the late game? I'm not sure, but well, I think it would have been able it would have been able to help Coco stay relevant, you know. Would have yeah. been able to farm a bit anyway. They're going to try to catch some people. Marin zoning a bit. Yeah, they're going to bring in Bang, or Bengi rather, with the lantern. Marin push back just a little bit. They're going to go in on the ambition space, shredding people with that Gatling gun. Wolf comes in. He's going to play after the Callista ultimate. That's an easy kill onto the AD carry for CJ. Oh, the Death Sentence barely misses ambition. But just more SK Telecom just kind of dominating CJ at the moment. It's been a pretty one-sided game. Yeah, not much to say. Yeah. Start off slowly, but SKT has made all the right moves. Their vision was excellent early on. It allowed them to play this map and could dictate the tempo of this game. Oh, and right on to Ambition again. The disengage. Everybody leaps out of the Baron pit. They're going to take out the jungler. Mad Life ults, but he's got no one around to help him. Coco Zonius before he goes down. Bang with another kill. There's Shy gets grabbed by yet another death sentence. And Bengi just dancing with Mad Life in the back until he finally decides to stop playing with his food. And there's an easy Baron for SK Telecom after pretty much an ace. Space had already been dead for a little while, so that is it. SK Telecom, they look pretty primed to end this one fairly early. 10,000 gold ahead, four dragons, a Baron. Yeah. What more do you need? Space already dead right there. They did catch out Ambition with the hook. It's pretty easy cleanup. Mad Life does blow a lot of people out of the Catacles. And Coco got hit by Easy Hoon's ultimate, though, and there's a summoner heal coming in just to make sure that Easy Hoon stayed alive. And yeah, certainly does. And that makes for a very fast, very oh, easy Bengi Baron. Oh, Bengi flashes Bengi. in. And they tried all with Galista. There's a nice play, though, with Wolf. Wolf has done such a good job of following up after the uh, Callista ultimate. Even if he doesn't hit with the knockup, he's able to be in range for a flay. And it's been very, very good for SK well, Telecom. And there's Dragon number five. And give some credit to Bengi. Oh, he man. flashed for the shield slow. So the slow yeah. off of his W in order to set up the Callista ult. All of SK Telecom's engages this game have been very clean. Yeah. Man, this is much more of a severe beating than I thought we would see. I, I you know, I was going to give CJ the edge. Coco taking a lot of damage to bang it. I was going to give CJ the edge coming into this one, but I did not think it was going to be this one-sided. Well, I'd, you'd think that CJ, now that they wouldn't have to be dealing with the NAR pick anymore, would have put up a little bit more of a fight right here, but yeah. instead they just delay all of those dragons. And 
Couple turrets going down, a little bit of split pushing from Marin, and you know, Shy was quick to jump on the Hecarim hype train, but it is not working out too well for him this game. Yeah, five Dragon Stacks should be able to end this game pretty quickly. Five Dragon Stacks in 33 minutes, yeah. very, very fast. And a Baron. And, and a, a Baron. Baron. Yeah, don't forget, the Baron too. Yeah. And this is gonna take the bot inhibitor and in play terms it of safe. objective control, this is just total domination. CJ very lost. Let's see if they can pick it up in game two because this one has been a bit of a blowout. Yeah. And they're gonna go on to Coco again. Coco not making it out, I don't think. Well, Rift walks away, but a turret goes down in the back lines. Bengi gets out. There's another catch oh, on the space. Nicely done. Wow. Banks Kalista ults with Wolf have been so good. Yeah, definitely. Uh, like we just talked about, he's been able to get in range for plays, for boxes. You know, not many of the Glista ults have connected for the knockup like that one did, but he's been able to use every single one. He gets close enough every time. And easy hood. Fountains apparently do not matter anymore. Oh, what? Are you kidding okay. me? Wow, that's a lot of damage. <laughs> that, that is an 11 1 and 2. Cassiopeia, that is a dead nexus, and that is a very one-sided win for SK Telecom, GG. That is an 11-1-2 Cassiopeia with Baron and an additional 12% AP as well, so yeah. just absolutely terrifying. Sure. Easy Hoon. Easy Hoon, easy life, man. That's right, easy Hoon, easy that game. life. <laughs> Didn't even look like he cared at the end of that one. He's like, yeah, what do you, what do you expect, you know? Impressive play, but Seriously. that said, really, I mean, it was a lot of CJ just doing nothing. Yeah. Uh, they they were given a lot of opportunities that I feel in the early game that they decided not to take. And they made plays onto the wrong lanes at the wrong time. Didn't respect the warding from SKT, but SKT's warding continues to be amazing. I mean, yeah. their vision control is so